Hi YouTube, I wanted to do a quick video on the Eucharist and look at a very particular argument and this is one based on the grammar of the Greek language. I'm not a Greek expert but I've heard this from other Catholic apologists and I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, there's many many better arguments that we should use to discuss the Eucharist uh, from a theological background and a philosophical background one of tradition and one of uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ. But, but we can focus in for a moment and look at the grammar of the Greek language and use that as a proof for the Eucharist. So let's take a look. If you have a Bible you can look at uh, the book of Ezekiel in chapter 11 verses 6 through 7. Uh, and the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the house of the Lord which looks towards the rising of the sun. And the Spirit of the Lord says, You have killed a great many in this city, and you have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Your slain, whom you have laid in the midst thereof, they are the meat. And this, moreover, is the cauldron. And I will bring you forth out of the midst thereof. So, he's using um, metaphorical language. He's comparing the city to a cauldron or a cooking pot and the, the dead people therein are like the meat in the stew. Um, so he's using metaphorical language. Uh, the part I want to focus in on is this yellow part. This moreover is the cauldron. In the Greek it's um, alte de o lebes estin. Okay, Again, I'm not a Greek expert so I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. but um, and literally, it's this, moreover, the cauldron is. Okay? Um, in Greek, the, um, the tenses, or the, uh, you know, the gender of the verbs, uh, or, or of the words, have to match. The gender of the pronouns, and the gender of the, of the, uh, the nouns, and, and things. So, if you're using a demonstrative pronoun like this, and you're referring to a noun, those two genders have to match. So the word this has a gender. It could either be masculine, feminine, or neuter. And whatever it is you're, you're de demonstrating also could be masculine, neuter, or feminine. Uh, but they, they have to match. You can't use a masculine this with a feminine um, noun. Um, they both have to be feminine, for example. So in this example you're using metaphorical language. So when you say this okay you're really demonstrating the city this city moreover is the cauldron so the word this which is feminine has to match uh, the word city and here we see city which isn't actually in the the passage but uh, the word city is polei sort of like polis like metropolis it's you know that, that Greek basis of the word city uh, is feminine Okay. Therefore, the word this up here is feminine. Even though the word city isn't really in here, it's kind of implied. This city, moreover, is the cauldron. Um, and so feminine matches feminine. Uh, to give you another example, maybe not in the Greek language, but if I told you, uh, you know, uh, there is an oak in the White House and you were a little bit confused by that and we were in Washington DC and you know President Bush walks by and I say this is the oak I was talking about you know let's just say I was a big fan of President Bush and I thought he was you know very uh, stalwart or something like that now that's an example you know there's, a, there's something physical you're, you're pointing to it you're demonstrating it but you're also using metaphorical language that's what the Ezekiel example is all about okay why is this important with the Eucharist? Well, the same structure can be found in the Gospels, you know, during the Last Supper. For example, in Mark chapter 14, verse 22, Christ says, this is my body. Now, the Protestants say that he was using metaphorical language. He had something physical that he was demonstrating, a piece of bread, but he was using metaphorical language. Uh, the word bread doesn't appear here. You know, this is the body, my, um, but it's the Protestants say it's implied. This piece of bread 
is my body. And he's using a metaphor. So he's really meaning it's like my body. Uh, bread is arton in Greek, and it happens to be masculine. Body is soma, and it is neuter. Okay, so if the Protestants are right, then we should be able to follow the Ezekiel uh, example. Uh, this should refer to the implied word bread, which should be right here, uh, and therefore it should be masculine. Uh, this piece of bread, this bread, is my body. Uh, the problem, though, is that the word this is neuter. Okay, neuter, of course, matches the neuter word body. So just from a grammatical standpoint, Christ had to be speaking literally. He could not be speaking metaphorically. Otherwise, he would, you know, Mark would have recorded his word in Greek here with the, the uh, masculine form of the word this. But he didn't. He used the neuter form of the word this. So it, it's a very uh, you know, focused kind of particular argument, and uh, you know, by no means is you know does the Catholic Church base its uh, teaching on transubstantiation on that that grammatical argument. But it's an interesting argument, and if you're Protestant, I invite you to really think about that. Um, why did Mark use um, the neuter form of this? You know, based on the example in Ezekiel, and based on common sense. If he was demonstrating a piece of bread which is masculine, he should have used the masculine. By the way, the same argument exists in the next verse where he talks about the blood. He says, this is my blood. The exact same argument. The word this he uses is neuter. The word blood is neuter. Uh, but the word wine is masculine. So in both cases, there is a grammatical problem for the Protestant um, exegesis and, and their whole theology, really. So that's all I wanted to, to go over, and um, may God bless us all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.